An Englishman in the Balkans podcast with David Bailey. It's an Englishman in the Balkans podcast uh, and we're talking today about wine. Um, some people know and some people don't know that Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, is famous in its own right for wines. Um, Tamara, my wife, loves um, certain types of wines from Herzegovina. Having said that, she's a little bit of a traitor because she likes uh, Macedonian wines um, as well. Up until recently, when actually, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this throughout the podcast, that there's actually wine on our doorstep. Um, some made not too far away uh, from us, and some, as I say, on the doorstep made by Italians um, that are here. But we're not talking about that today. We're talking about the whole of what it is with wine in Bosnia-Herzegovina. Some time ago uh, on Instagram, I found an account and I think it was called, and it still is called, Bella Wine Chafe. Chafe, by the way, is the Bosnian word for <clears throat> laid back. I think it sounds much better than the American word chill. It's just like the ultimate. And then I looked on the, then I looked onto the, uh, the description uh, and I was absolutely amazed that somebody from Bosnia and Herzegovina was like a wine expert, but not just a wine expert, but somebody that's worked outside. Today I'm joined from Black Eye, and we could talk for a whole hour about Black Eye, but we're not, by Bella Dominkovic, who is um, a wine expert and is uh, a sommelier. So we're going to find out about that. So let's start off with the normal first question. Bella, nice to have you on the podcast. My first question is always a very simple one, and I think simple questions are always the best. Who is Bella Dominkovic? Well, to make it short, I'm a wine lover. Um, originally, I'm coming from Swiss. Um, I'm from Switzerland. I'm Swiss. And um, I live here in Bosnia-Herzegovina since 2018. First a year in Sarajevo, and now we moved um, to the, my beloved Herzegovina, the southern part of Bosnia-Herzegovina. So I am a wine expert. Uh, I'm a stated uh, sommelier. Um, I am a holder of... Um, the WSCT diploma, and also I'm a food and wine expert in uh, food technology and food processing, which is very important that you can pair food and wine perfectly. So, um, yeah, for me, uh, wine is my life, and I decided 10 years ago to make my hobby to my profession, and here I am. What made you come to Bosnia and Herzegovina, if you are originally um, Swiss? <laughs> um, well, um, my ex-husband, he was working for a Swiss NGO with, uh, the, with a project here in the Balkans. So he had to move in 2018 to Bosnia-Herzegovina. He asked me to join and... I was excited to work also abroad to deep dive into the wine business. And this is why we decided in 2018 to move from Zurich to Bosnia-Herzegovina. That's a, a story in itself, which I'll have to catch up with over a glass of wine with you. What inspired you to become a wine expert? How did you v develop this expertise that you have? Well, it started... Um, very early. Um, I, rec I loved wine since I am legally allowed to drink. And it was always wine who catch me. Um, beca because wine itself, it's very versatile. You have red wine, white wine, different styles, different countries, different regions. And then I had uh, once this um, basic wine class. This was just an evening, four hours, very simple, but it catched me because I realized that winemaking is so much more than just um, harvest the grape, press it out, 
let the juice ferment and bottle it. And this was the point that I decided I want to deep dive into the winemaking. So um, I also have a study, let's say a diploma um, in analogy and viticulture. So I know um, how to do wines. So I'm a winemaker too. And this whole package, uh, it started with um, this WSCT uh, diploma, which is the Wine and Spirit Education uh, Trust diploma um, located in London. This is an international no known diploma. Um, and then I decided to um, deep dive into food and wine pairing. And this is why I decided uh, to... Um, make this uh, a diploma as a stated sommelier from uh, the wine and sommelier school in Germany. And also this uh, food and wine specialist is a diploma of the same school. So with all these um, certificates and diploma, you have the whole package. And it's, a, it's the best thing I ever did because it's my passion turned into profession and it's it's my life, my love, my life, and I can live it daily. I looked on your website, uh, or I checked you out online, and you you have actually you've actually worked in France in in one of the most famous chateaus, I believe. Um, no, it it it's not uh, let's say one of the famous, but one of the um, outstanding ones because we this chateau is in the Provence and. By the way, I, I'm going back in two weeks for another season. And this chateau is very uh, specific because um, we are not only um, a chateau and, and a winery, we are also a research institute for fungus resistant grape varieties. So this is very special. Because it, with this climate change, um, this topic will pop up more, 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 and will become more and more and more important. And uh, this is also very special. Uh, the Chateau du Vivier is um, uh, also a hotel, so you can uh, book some rooms. Um, and beside them, it's, it, it is a winery and a research institute in the middle of the wild and wonderful Provence. Now we're talking about wines from Bosnia and Herzegovina, my adopted country that I've fallen in love with. It seems that you have fallen in love with Bosnia and with Bosnia Herzegovina as well. Bella, what makes the wines of Bosnia and Herzegovina unique? And how do they differ from wines produced in, in other regions? For example, uh, in Portugal or, or France or Germany or wherever? Well, this is a good, really good question. I mean, at least... Um, we can be very proud here in Bosnia Herzegovina because we are we are having two out of Donos grape varieties. Um, this is the white Shilavka and the red Blatina. So, what it makes it also very special is um, we have climate wise very different climates here in Bosnia Herzegovina. Um, because we have not only in the Herzegovina um, there is wine, there is also in the northern part uh, around Banja Luka. We do have uh, um, different wineries. And when we speak from Banja Luka, we have a continental climate, completely different soil. Um, Herzegovina is Mediterranean, so that means the, the wines are very... Um, fruity, um, very amenable, um, but also very elegant because of the grape varieties. Um, then we have a lot, a lot of sun. So that gives power into the wine. Um, we have also um, a very fruitable uh, soil and mixed with stones, what gives this specific minerality to a wine. And I think this combination um, makes it that our wines are very terror, terror, terroir driven. 
You mentioned about not only Herzegovina, but you mentioned about the wines in the area where I live in Bosnia and Herzegovina um, here in the north. I was very, very, very surprised um, doing some research into the immigrant communities uh, into Bosnia and Herzegovina as the Ottomans left the country and the Habsburgers um, took it over and, and they brought people in uh, to try and improve the uh, agricultural skills of the people of what was then their province. Um, and I was fascinated about the it, the Italian population that had arrived in a town called Lactashi, which is on my doorstep here, and then to go to visit them. And they said, well, we have a, we have a winery here. Uh, that was shock number one. Shock number two for me as an immigrant was to know that near Prignavo, uh, there is now a winery that has been set up by somebody from that area uh, with Ukrainian background who's brought um, an expert winemaker from the Alsace uh, into the country, and they're now producing, I, I'm assuming it's going to be amazing, award-winning wine. Not many people understand that there's wine in the north and wine in the south. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Which, in your professional opinion, do you think is the more classical wine? Is it the Kraina wine from up here in the north, or is it the Herzegovina wine from the area where you are in today? Well, this is a really good question. Um, I would say, um, style-wise, it is more the Herzegovina wine who is known as wine from Bosnia Herzegovina, because in the in the northern part we have also completely different grape varieties than we are cultivating here in the south part. This, is, this, this belongs to the climate and also to the soil. Uh, this is very important for a grape. But um, when I compare the wine styles, and I know from which winery you are talking about, and the wines are outstanding because I was there. And this is, you can see that this handmade, this French style. I mean, this very elegant uh, uh, style that... Uh, he brings in 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 his uh, wine varieties, but I would say um, from when we compare the wines from the northern part to the south to the part uh, Herzegovina, who is in the south, then we have let's say the fruitier, the uh, much much more volume, and um, we can. Um, yeah, let's say um, our advantage is that we have Shilavka and Platina, um, which are the two out of Donos grape varieties, one of two, but the two most famous. There is also Trniak, there is also Vranac, uh, Blavac Mali, um, which are also very, uh, very known. But um, with Shilavka and Platina, I would say the Herzegovina part is much more known abroad than the northern part. That's very interesting because it leads now to my next question for you is what are some of the challenges facing uh, Bosnian winemakers? And if they do have challenges, how easy is it for them to overcome? And I, I ask this question because, I mean, I'm an Englishman. Uh, I've always, my uncle moved to France when I was five and he is now well, he's coming to the end of his life, but he's more French than a Frenchman, I would imagine. And he has always said that, you know, it, the, the wine in France is, it's like a religion. It's embedded in the culture. Everybody, even, uh, the, you know, a, a small person in Paris can tell you about wine, which is amazing because most English people couldn't tell you about beer. So Bosnia and Herzegovina is a tiny country Compared to France, um, what, chal what challenges do Bosnian winemakers have today and how do they overcome it? Well, the challenge is even we have um, over 2,200 year old history 
in terms of winemaking here in Bosnia-Herzegovina. Um, Bosnia-Herzegovina struggled with a lot of war. I have to mention it because um, this is one point that Bosnia-Herzegovina has still a huge potential in terms of wine styles. But also what we do have is we don't produce a huge amount of wine. So we are talking about uh, 700 hectares. I mean, more or less, uh, it's really difficult to, to, um, to find figures which are not as old as I am. But I would say 700 hectares, just to compare, this is half uh, of Mosul in Germany. So the problem is for sure also to produce a proper amount uh, to export. Hmm. Um, then it's also a political, or, or let's say uh, not a political, but it is a problem that um, Bosnia-Herzegovina is still, uh, I mean, we are now a candidate, but um, we are not in the EU. So uh, sometimes they struggle also uh, with the uh, export, uh, export uh, um, things, uh, a lot of paperwork, um, a lot of uh, complicated things to fill in. And there is also a generation problem, but now there is a tremendous change in it. So the young winemakers, they have um, international experience. So they study, for example, in Austria or, the, or they were um, for two, three months in Australia. Um, because before it was like my grandfather did it like that. I do it like that too, because I don't know it better. Um, this is a little bit of, this was a little bit of a problem, but this change. And with this change, um, we feel that uh, new wine styles were being created. Uh, the wines are a little bit younger, um, um, not in, in terms of vintage, but in terms of wine style, more amenable. Um, they pay more attention to the international market and so on. And um, I think we are in a good way to get more and more recognized to a wider audience. But still, we are a really small dot on the international wine market. So there's still a lot of work to do. You were mentioning there about um, the younger people saying, my dad did it like this, or my grandfather did it like this. This is how I did it. Um, I this, this is nothing to do with wine, but we have in the garden uh, and the property where we live here in the village uh, a fair amount of plum trees. And as you know, at the end of the year, it's time for making rakia, whether it's Slivovica or, or Dunjavaca or, or whatever. And I've noticed that there doesn't seem to be a school for rakia. The school for rakia is father, grandfather, um, great-grandfather. And 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 for me, rakia plays uh, an integral part of uh, the culture of of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, what role does wine play? Have you seen in the culture of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and and do you see that changing over time? There is a change, um, but still, uh, we are a country of spirits. This is a fact. But wine uh, come, becomes more and more uh, important um, as well uh, because also the gastronomy part um, of Bosnia-Herzegovina is changes with a lot of very good restaurants. Um, the people travel more. Um, they compare, uh, they can compare a little bit more uh, the wines from abroad um, with the wines from here, from Bosnia-Herzegovina. And the point is that, that um, with this, also with this, uh, and social media has a huge impact also here in Bosnia-Herzegovina uh, to generate more wine drinkers because wine, it's even more Instagrammable than the glass of rakia. 
So there is with the, the generation now, there is a change that wine becomes much more, more and more popular. Here's a professional question for you. I've had arguments about this um, in all the time that I've been here. Um, and now I've got somebody that will either prove me right or wrong, but at least I'll be at least I'll be able to give the correct um, answer. Bella, in my life as a Northern European, I've always been used to drinking wine, red wine. Uh, I love claret. I just die for a good deep claret with lots of cheese. It's it, it's 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 my route to heaven. But um, uh, but here, every time, I, I, at least I get to drink red wine, it's always served cold. Are they doing it right or have I got it wrong? Well, when you're fond of claret, then you're drinking history. We know that it was a very um, important part for Bordeaux centuries ago. Um, but yeah, let, let me see. No. Um, I can't, uh, here in the Herzegovina, um, they serve the wine um, on a proper temperature. So it depends a little bit if you have a young red, um, steel tank, fruity, uh, young vintage, then it is a little bit colder. But um, when you have an aged one, um, then they serve it a uh, this is what this is my experience. I never had a wine that was um, poured in my glass with the wrong temperature. Honestly, to say, I always I always get the feeling up here in the north uh, when I'm at a restaurant or uh, visiting family members that the wine is always in the fridge, and that for me is just like what? I mean, it, it shouldn't be in the fridge, should it? <laughs> well, um, I mean. I see that, for example, these five liter plastic bags are usually in the fridge because they have to once they are open. This is not a high quality wine. In two days, they're full of oxidation aroma, so they can uh, they can uh, uh, put it away. Um, but normally, no. Uh, so these restaurants I know they have wine fridge. Would I have specific wine fridges for white wine, red wine, and, and for red wine, the aged ones, and, and, for, and the younger ones, which you serve a little bit uh, colder as uh, usual. But um, no, I didn't have this experience once again here in the Herzegovina. Well, at least, uh, at least uh, I, I feel that I've got, got it half right. Bella, you mentioned about, I just love what, I, I just love what you said about, um, a glass of wine is more Instagrammable than a glass of rakia, and social media could help uh, the wine industry um, from Bosnia and Herzegovina. I, I think that's absolutely amazing. Taking that a stage further, um, what is what is wine tourism like at the moment in the country? Is it is it something that is used a lot or is it still something that is for uh, specialists, um, hobbyists that, you know, like wines in Northern Europe or like wines in South America and they come here because, you know, they're just you're, they're just into wine? Or, I mean, I, I would say that wine tourism could be another step, as you said, for the for the more opening up of Bosnia-Herzegovina. Is there a lot of wine tourism in the country that you know of? Well, um, unfortunately, um, tourism here in Bosnia-Herzegovina in general is still driven by the war tourism. This is a fact, unfortunately. But a lot of new uh, agencies and also, uh, for example, USAID, they are pushing um, this... Um, tourism economy in a really good way so that people abroad know Bosnia as a country with a wonderful, breathtaking nature, um, with vibrant cities. Um, we have 
with Banja Luka, with the Sarajevo, uh, the capital, with Mostar, uh, Tuzla, for example. We have so many uh, vibrant and, and cultural driven cities. And also um, we have Neom, so seaside. And a lot of people pass Bosnia. So it, for me, Bosnia, when I talk with the people, then I recognize that it changes now. But before it was like, um, it's, it, it's like a drive through country. You know, the German who wants to go to Croatia is two, three days. Oh, okay, I, I drive through Bosnia-Herzegovina. The same with Herzegovina itself. So um, tourists from Sarajevo, they visit Herzegovina maybe one day. They don't recognize that we have wine, we have uh, um, mountains. You can go hiking, biking, canoeing. Um, there is so much. You can spend months here in Bosnia-Herzegovina in this small country and you don't see it all and this had but this is also a change uh, we have a lot of really good agencies now um, uh, a lot of NGOs um, who is taking care of it that uh, the tourism itself in Bosnia-Herzegovina um, has to grow and to get known by a wider audience that people come specifically to Bosnia-Herzegovina in general, to make vacation and not only drive through and stay two, three days. I'm coming uh, specifically to the wine tourism. There is still a long way to go because there is no specific wine tourism, as I know that people come a week to the Provence just to drive from Chateau to Chateau, the same in Bordeaux, the same in Italy. And this would be also uh, one of the aims to bring wine tourism here to Bosnia-Herzegovina, that people come from the, for the wine. Nobody's done it yet. Bella, you've got, you've got a business idea. You can make this work. <laughs> no, I mean, USAID, for example, they did a lot in terms of wine tourism. They um, founded this... Um, uh, Vinska Cesta, so the wine route through Herzegovina, but um, there is still a long way to go to increase also a little bit um, uh, the quality. Um, uh, we need to make sure that the winemaker, uh, they speak uh, proper English, for example, or that we catch our tu tourists on an emotional way um, when we talk about our wines on a tasting, for example. But this was also, this is part of my project to upgrade a little bit this tastings, this um, wine, this specific wine tourism um, when I'm back in November uh, 23. <laughs> because unfortunately in two weeks I have to leave. But there are um, a lot of projects ongoing um, where I cannot speak at this moment. But... Um, a huge movement is in, in terms of tourism and wine tourism um, at the moment. Um, we are working on it. Bella, for those that are listening and suddenly saying to themselves, there's a lot being talked about Bosnian wines here. There's one question I want to ask. I'm going to do it for them. Can you recommend some must-try Bosnian wines for somebody that has never tried it? before yeah sure i mean as i said um our wine styles are very versatile in terms that because we have um very different uh wine grapes who reflect each region let's say the northern part i would say when it comes to to bosnia herzegovina i would recommend a, a, a blatina which is a red wine. Our Blatina, you can compare it um, with the Sangiovese uh, grape from Italy or also with the Pinot Noir. So let's say from the char characteristic side. Um, and the wine is 
very specific because you feel the power, for example, of Herzegovina. So the sun, it's, it's a very amenable, fruity wine, um, but also the aged versions, um, they are very versatile, very layered, but it always shows the terroir, that means this fruitiness from the sun, this um, saltiness and, and um, stony flavors from the soil. And also there's always a herbal touch in it because we have many herbs around here in Herzegovina, wild herbs as well. And uh, when it comes to the white wine, for sure, a Zilavka, which is in the same family like the Prosecco grape Glera. So it's a very blossomy, very fruity uh, and very versatile uh, grape variety. Then we have um, the power of Vranac, which is not an out of Donos grape variety from Bosnia-Herzegovina, but it's um, a grape variety who is growing um, in, in the area of Trebinje. So a lot of power, a lot of sun, a lot of soil, um, a very layered, um, complex um, wine, and so on. Uh, I mean, I think they have to come here and travel across Bosnia-Herzegovina to take all these different styles and, uh, with them because it reflects our country on its best way that's a great tip great tips there fine finally bella because i don't want to take up too much more of your time uh, i know that you're going to leave in two weeks um and then you'll be back later in the year um i know that you're going to get annoyed with me most probably asking this question what plans have you got what is the dream that you want to achieve here in Bosnia Herzegovina, when it comes to wine. Well, first of all, that we get known to a wider audience, that we get the, a place on the international wine market, which we deserve with our wine, because we don't have to hide ourselves um, in terms of wine styles and wine quality, um, and. I wish that once Bosnia-Herzegovina is known as one of the most rated uh, boutique country when it comes to wine. You're listening to An Englishman in the Balkans. You can contact us at anenglishmaninthebalkans at gmail.com.